do it. Okay. Um, well, welcome everyone. Um, uh, thank you for welcome to uh, NYU Langone Dental Anesthesiology Residence <laughs> Virtual Forum. Um, as you know, um, because of the uh, COVID-19 crisis, uh, we have been unable to have um, visitors to the program, observers, or externs, as they're often called, uh, in, in potential applicants that um, are want to uh, observe the resident and resident life and, and get an idea of the culture of the program. And we've been frustrated in that we haven't been able to um, offer our applicants that that experience. So. This is an attempt to um, give a, a virtual tour of the, uh, of the curriculum of the program. And uh, we hope it, it, it gives you some insight and, um, and there will, we are going to have a, uh, a short, relatively short slideshow uh, where we will um, highlight the important aspects of the program. And then there will be a period um, afterwards for um, question, question and answer, uh, pretty free form. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, so I'm I'm Dr. Dr. Azaretti, the program director, Charles Azaretti, and here um, is um, uh, Dr. Ken Reed, who is the associate program director, and also. Um, the uh, director of the offsite programs, which, uh, as you will come to understand, are a very important aspect of our uh, curriculum. I can go to the next slide. There, these are our um, uh, co-chief residents. Well, these are the two. Um, these are the uh, PGY three, well, or the soon to be PGY three class on your right. And this is uh, and on the arrows uh, pointing to uh, Dr. Michelle Modad and Dr. Torian Smith. They are co-chief residents uh, of that class. And the on the left are uh, are the uh, soon to be PGY two residents, and with uh, two also uh, two co-chiefs, uh, Dr. Anthony Ross and Dr. Joe Lenz. Uh, we like to, uh, we have a, a fairly large program, as you know, we have uh, six residents in each class, total of 18 residents. Um, the uh, basic hierarchy of the, uh, of the program is pretty flat. Um, there's um, a lot of um, give and take um, uh, with, the, with the residents. The residents' input is important for uh, running the program. And uh, because of the number of residents we have uh, to be efficient um, in, in the management, we have a, the structure where we have four co-chiefs, two senior and two junior co-chiefs. Um, this is um, you know, the basic program overview. It's a 36 month program, a code accredited, it's hospital based six residents in a class. Um, it's located in um, uh, Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Uh, it's a, uh, um, a very, uh, you know, quite an institution, a level one trauma center, a stroke center, bariatric center of excellence. This is a picture of the uh, facility. It's probably the nicest picture I've ever seen of it, but um, yes, that's, uh, that's um, NYU Langone, Brooklyn. Um, the, um, the program, uh, some aspects of the program, we have, uh, our didactics uh, involve uh, this grand rounds where um, all once a week, um, all the uh, NYU Langone anesthesia residents, that means the, the dental anesthesia residents and the medical anesthesia residents, they, they um, uh, are invited to this and there are some continuing ed education and you know, information given. Uh, one of the things that I, that I would like to, to point out is that there are um, medical anesthesia residents, uh, NYU medical anesthesia residents, and I, find, I found that the culture that exists between the medical and dental resident anesthesia residents is, 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 is very good, it's very supportive. Um, I think having this third year of the program 
has um, enhanced the stature of the dental anesthesiology residency program within the, within the institution. When you have residents that have been house staff for three years and function, are functioning competently, by the time a resident has been there for three years, people know you and the, the degree uh, on ID card is really less important than, than your, your level of competence and your ability to work, work with your uh, colleagues. Also, we have uh, keyword presentations. Um, the the, uh, the PGY1 residents uh, present um, about, it's about 150 uh, presentations over the year, divided into, you know, six, uh, six of the PGY1 residents. These function, these occur in, in the morning before the OR, uh, three mornings a week. It's uh, 6.30, 6.40 a.m. to 7, to 7 a.m. Um, lately, unfortunately, uh, we've been doing these online, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get back to to uh, face to face meetings soon. Then there is a journal club um, where there are literature reviews, board question reviews, presentations, PGY two, PGY three residents. Um, it's um, uh, and all of these meetings, when they occur in person, are also a touchstone where we. Um, uh, important announcements are made, and then the you know we're all, we get uh, we're connected because everybody is 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 you know working in different aspects of the program of the program or different different departments, um, and we come together um, uh, once a week for journal club and at the uh, and the keyword presentations. Also. Um, we have a, uh, a simulation training um, uh, part of the curriculum. We have, a, there's a, uh, a, uh, a simulation lab on the sixth floor of the hospital. And currently uh, we uh, run um, four sessions a year for the PGY1 residents. Um, and that is usually run by Dr. Reed and maybe Dr. Brady and, and Dr. Akunde, they come from, uh, They'll come from over uh, from Arizona, and they will run these uh, simulation sessions with the uh, with the PGY one residents. Also, have an in training. The in training exam is is provided by the ADBA, but we use it as a focus to um, to prep residents for um, the board exam. And, um, in general, board questions are are, are usually excellent uh, learning tools. Uh, we have uh, our research and, and study days, which um, uh, give residents a break. Um, you know, there might be a day where uh, it depends. It all depends on the schedule, uh, where a resident can have a can have a. Uh, it's a free day. It doesn't mean you still have to report to the hospital, but it gives you it gives you time uh, out of the the clinical responsibilities to to you know get going with your uh, research requirement and and just general study. Uh, there are ACLS and PALS uh, certifications that every, every, everybody certifies in ACLS and PALS at the, in the beginning of the program. Even if you're already certified, we want you to go through the NYU certification. So it's kind of a calibration. So everybody's on, on the same page. And then um, there's a resident requirement uh, for a research project, um, and that takes the form of a, Clinical studies, or um, very commonly case report presentations. Uh, the residents have done systematic or uh, structured uh, structured reviews, literature reviews. Um, some we've had uh, we've had several um, uh, studies and um, reviews published. Um, so that's a that's a, a, an important aspect of of the uh, didactic. Uh, program. Um, as far as um, clinical anesthesia training, um, we're very, very, uh, we, I'd say we're more of a, you know, a, 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 our strength and our focus is, is on clinical training. Um, these are just some statistics that give you an idea of the, um, of the extent of, of the training. Um, the uh, NYU Brooklyn, these are, um, these are, um, 
stats um, that actually in parentheses next to each of the parameters, uh, I, a couple of days ago, I, I, I pulled up the, uh, the case logs of the uh, PGY3 residents and added everything up and divided by six. And these are the numbers. So we, we, we like to say that uh, our residents, when they go through the program, they do 1500 plus cases. The current average is 1551. Uh, nasal intubations, we like to say 400 plus. Current average is 429. The total number of intubations um, is current average is 701. Laryngeal mask airways, 126. In, in monitored anesthesia care cases, um, uh, we, we there's there's a, a a huge amount of uh, of clinical clinical experience. Um, the I like to say that um, you know when the residents uh, leave the program, they're ready to practice from day one. And in contrast to that, you know, you see that, you know, the code of requirements, which are, which are very significant, but the, um, you know, the, the what the, the clinical experience that, that our residents get, um, uh, are far surpass the uh, code of requirements. And that comes in handy, um, because even at a time, uh, when we have, um, this, this pandemic and where we were not our residents. We're not doing cases for the most part for you know two months, and and their case logs on uh, certain aspects took took a hit, but it it you know w wasn't a problem in terms of the uh, of, of the coda coda requirements. Um, now in the PGY one year, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hand this off to our uh, rising PGY one residents, um, Dr. Uh, Ross and and Dr. Lenz. All right, thanks, Dr. Azaridi. Um I'm Dr. Lenz. I'm uh, a current PGY one resident. Uh, soon uh, finishing up first year here, and uh, will be a PGY two soon. And I'm just going to talk to you about um, what it means to be a first year resident at NYU Langone. Um, so the year starts out with new resident orientation um, right away in July. Um, and that includes just uh, you getting oriented to the program, um, finishing your hospital onboarding, going through um, ACLS and PAL certifications, which is actually uh, was a fun experience from my memory. We took the ferry over to Manhattan and um, did our ACLS and PAL certifications. Um, then we we also, uh, as a incoming first year resident, you'll get multiple uh, lectures on anesthesia related topics, um, covering different or, um, organ systems and all um, areas of basic anesthesia um, topics to get you ready to go into the OR. And we have a welcome dinner with uh, all the residents, first, second, and third years, as well as attendings. Um, it's a it's a really nice introduction into the program. Um, my favorite part of uh, the uh, orientation was our two month paired up period. So how that works is at our at our program right away in July, the first year residents are doing cases in the OR. You do a ton of cases as a as a first year resident in the hospital OR uh, for the first two months in July and August. You're paired up with an older resident, with a second or third year resident, and um, and that served me really well. And I think everyone really likes that. Um, it's a good way to to be introduced to the to the hospital environment and to the operating room and learning all the systems and um, how to assess a patient, learning about all the anesthesia equipment, hands on. Um, you will be intubating patients right away in July um, in the OR, learning pharmacology, um, all those things to get you uh, get you up to speed. And then we also incorporate some IV days uh, that are just dedicated days where you get to practice placing IVs. Um, we show you how to do it the first few times, and then you get to have lots of practice on your own. Um, placing ideas on patients, real patients coming in to, to the hospital for their procedures. Uh, so that two month period was really valuable. July and August, you'll do a ton of cases with the older residents. And basically they show you the ropes and, and teach you the basic things you need to know. Um, then after that, um, after July and August, so starting in September, you will be on your own as a first year resident working one-on-one -on -one with your attending. 
Um, most of the time you'll work with a medical physician anesthesiologist. And then um, when you're doing dental cases, a lot of times it'll be a, one of our dental anesthesiologist attendings. Um, so you get a, a wide variety of attendings to work with. And, um, and so then in September, you, you fly on your own and you're, you're doing cases like a normal anesthesia resident every day. Um, your first year, you'll get a total of 10 months in the OR just in your first year. Um, you'll do a lot of cases. Uh, the average is 560. Um, me personally, I've done well over 600 cases already my first year. Um, and that includes uh, with the COVID time mixed in there. Um, and we see a wide variety of cases. Um, these are like full scope medical surgeries. So lots of general surgery, plastic surgery, bariatric surgery on obese patients, which is which is really good anesthesia training, um, orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, robotics, interventional radiology, ENT. Um, I did a bunch of ENT cases today. That was my day today in the OR. Um, urology, gynecology, some open airway, lots of open airway cases with podiatry and endoscopy, which is really good training for us as a dental anesthesiologist and of course dental cases too. Um, and this is a, a wide variety of patients. It's elective and emergency procedures. And it's not just all healthy patients. It's a lot of, at, in the hospital, the reality is, is a lot of sick patients. Um, ASA one through five, I, I, we do a ton of ASA three and four patients. So um, a lot of complex uh, medical histories um, on the patients that you'll, you'll be doing cases on. Um, so like I said, you have 10 months total in the OR your first year, and then the other two months are comprised of inpatient uh, rotations. So one month is um, you'll be on inpatient pediatric medicine, um, where you, what you'll do here is you'll round every day with the pediatrician and their PA or nurse practitioner, and you'll get to learn all about uh, pediatric medicine and assist in the patient care. And then um, the, the other month is on internal medicine, so just adult medicine, inpatient, um, you'll round with the internal medicine residents, get to know them and the attendings, um, and get to learn all the complex uh, medicine that goes on with um, the adult patients that are in-house. Um, and then finally, um, the other part of first year, and this is every year, um, we take call uh, at NYU Lingo and we take call. Um, that's in-hospital in call, and you take that your first, second, and third year. Um, the first years take the most call, the second years take less, and then the third years take even less. So it does taper off as you as you progress through the program, which is which is nice. Um, and for me, call, um, it's been a really good experience. I, I think it's highly valuable in your training. Um, I, I've seen some of the best cases uh, when I'm when I'm on call, you get to see complex cases, emergencies, traumas people getting with stab wounds or gunshots and everything in between. Um, so uh, some of the best cases are, are on call and you learn a lot um, doing that. And then what, uh, what makes it very doable is you get a post call day. So that means if you're on call on Monday, that means you have Tuesday off. So you always have a post call day. So um, that means you have the next day off and that makes it very doable um, taking call. And then um, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Ross. Thanks, Dr. Lenz. Um, my name is Anthony Ross. I'm also rising second year resident here. Um, and going off what Joe said, uh, you know, we get the ball rolling. We're finally getting into the groove of first year, learning how to, you know, tackle these cases with our attendings. Uh, and then the world is hit. Uh, by the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and unfortunately, as most of you probably know, uh, New York was hit pretty hard uh, with COVID. Uh, there's about 200,000 cases uh, in New York City alone uh, and about 52,000 deaths. So many of those cases ended up running through the Brooklyn and Queens hospital systems. Uh, as a result, many of us were redeployed throughout the hospital. Um, we were doing 12 hour shifts in the ICUs, the emergency department. Uh, our entire hospital was converted in a sense to a COVID unit. 
we were taking part in airway teams as many of these patients had to be intubated. And uh, unfortunately, many of them suffered cardiopulmonary arrest, uh, which we responded to as well on code teams, in addition to our traditional uh, caseload in the operating room. So a couple points on that. We always had adequate PE, PPE, as you can see Dr. Lenz in the photo there with, with some of our post anesthesia care unit nurses. Uh, we had N95 masks, face shields, full gowns, bouffant coverings, shoe coverings, you name it. Um, it was an excellent learning opportunity um, as much as it was stressful and definitely um, nerve wracking to take care of these very sick patients. But I think, I think the point of it all is that, um, you know, coming from dentistry, you really do have this very steep learning curve. Um, but we meet it with, you know, uh, a great amount of pride. And uh, we accepted this role within the hospital right alongside our medical anesthesia counterparts. And we're able to take care of our population. And I think that speaks volumes, uh, not only for our hospital and our community, but, you know, this burgeoning specialty of dental anesthesiology. I think now we're going to talk about uh, the second year and the rotations that go along with that. All right, so I'm Dr. Modad. I just finished my second year. Um, so the first year really lays the foundation for your anesthesia training, primarily your in medicine cases, like they've said. Um, the second year, you're also doing a lot of medical cases. So the first year you lay down that foundation, the second year you fine tune your medical anesthesia. But you also get to play a bigger role in what we're going to do eventually, which is dental anesthesia. So we spend seven months at the hospital. Um, we also do one month medicine rotation. So our medicine rotation the second year is a rapid response team. And what we do for that rotation is we round on all the patients in the hospital um, and we really learn how to um, evaluate an emergency either knowing that a patient doesn't just doesn't look right, something's going to happen, or, you know, do a full CPR code. We're part of the rapid response team fully, and what that means is we will be pushing drugs, we will be um, doing actual um, CPR on these patients. Um, we're a team, and they see us as a part of that. And then the most exciting part, the, the part that really makes our program shine is we get it a taste of that mobile anesthesia rotation, um, which is for our second year, it's two months in Arizona and then two months in Los Angeles. Um, and I think Dr. Dr. Reed, if he's um, still here, he's going to speak a little bit more about our Arizona rotation. I am here and actually I got my power back too. So I'm on Wi-Fi. I, I should be okay. Uh, yeah. So both Second and third years, you do come to Arizona. Um, second year, you also go to California. Second year, as uh, was said, two months in Arizona, two months in LA. Uh, third year, it's four months back in Arizona. It's based in Phoenix. Uh, we have a really nice townhouse for you there. You get rental cars there. Uh, your airfare to and from Phoenix from uh, New York is all covered. Uh, and then we have seven different attendings in Arizona that you'll rotate with. Uh, so we have a total in our program of about 12. So 12 dentist anesthesiologists in this program, I think is pretty amazing. So you'll work with different people, you'll do different things. Uh, Arizona is very heavily based toward pediatrics. So you'll do a lot of pediatrics. The up and coming specialty uh, in Arizona is oral surgery and perio. We're doing more and more oral surgery in, in perio cases. I know Torian and I uh, today did a nice case with an oral surgeon, complex odontoma, odontoma the oral surgeon that took out over 40 individual teeth from this odontoma. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but of your seven attendings here, uh, two, two of us, two of them, uh, do a lot of open airway cases and the other five mostly do intubated cases. You get a really nice mix. We do some moderate sedation, not a lot. Most of it's general anesthesia. Uh, we work with pediatric dentists, periodontists, endodontists, oral surgeons, general dentists, you name it. We work with them. Um, as I said, the oral surgery component is increasing. One of my 
places I go is called San Carlos Apache, and it's on the Apache Reservation. Um, and just last week, they asked us if we would start to do anesthesia for the oral surgeons there as well. So uh, I think that you'll like Arizona. It's very, very fun. Uh, it's a lot of work, you get a lot of cases, and this is what you will be doing the rest of your life. So we think it's a very important uh, rotation for you. That's all I got. Dr. Lee is next. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Um, the Los Angeles offsite rotation is taken during the PGY2 year, and it's based at Solus Surgical Arts Center, which is in Tarzana, California, suburb of Los Angeles. Uh, Solus is an ambulatory surgery center uh, dedicated to dentistry under anesthesia. We have two full-size operating rooms and two dental treatment operatories, all having the ability to provide general anesthesia to all patients. The focus really of this offsite rotation is to fill, fulfill and exceed the special needs requirement during the residency. In addition to adult special needs, we see uh, patients that are dental phobic. Uh, in Los Angeles, we'll be taking care of mostly adult patients. Um, patients undergoing comprehensive dental treatment um, with emphasis on oral surgery, implantology, endodontics, basically comprehensive dental care. Uh, the full spectrum, um, the full special needs requirement as well as nasal intubation requirement are usually met and exceeded during the two month uh, rotation. We do some open airway cases. Uh, we do some moderate sedation, a few on patients that can't tolerate general anesthesia, but mostly it is intubated general anesthetics. Uh, the rotation also serves as a bridge between for the PGY2 residents from the hospital to anesthesia in outpatient dental settings. Uh, within that educational framework developed by Dr. Reed, Residents are exposed to the full spectrum of anesthetic drugs and techniques utilized in dental outpatient anesthesia. Residents are allowed to develop and implement individualized anesthetic treatment plans based on proposed dental procedures and medical and psychological status of each individual patient. Residents are usually given autonomy and perform um, anesthesia utilizing nasal intubations uh, use of the laryngeal mask airway and open airway cases. Residents can hone their skills with of nasal intubation utilizing at least six different video laryngoscopes here in LA. And uh, during their stay, during their two months, residents are given free housing in an apartment that's one block away from the facility. Um, in most cases, when you work at Solus, breakfast and lunch are usually provided during the work week. Um, however, we don't provide a rental car during this rotation. And that's about it for Los Angeles. We'll have a lot of fun. You'll see a lot of uh, interesting cases. Um, you'll wrestle down some special needs patients. Uh, we've all done it and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully we see you all in Los Angeles soon. I guess this is me. Uh, I just want to start by uh, just saying thanks to Dr. Uh, Anthony Ross and Dr. Joseph Lenz for their uh, work in getting this started. Um, it makes Dr. Modat a nice job a lot easier. I'm Dr. Torian Smith. So our third year um, is unique to, to a lot of the programs in the fact that we spend a significantly reduced amount of time in our hospital. Uh, our off-site um, time does increase as well as opportunities to finish off some of the things that we started early on, particularly research projects and preparing ourselves for the ADBA board. Um, during this year, we do see, because of that, a reduction in cases, if you've noticed. However, we still exceed um, the, the average. Um, so we spend about a total of five months uh, during that 12 month period in our OR. Um, and I was thinking about how has our first, second and third year or first and second year cases uh, compared to our third. And I, and I find that oftentimes we don't see a huge change because of the training that we receive. And, and what I mean by that is that as first years, we do have the opportunity to be in very complex uh, cases such as neuro and trauma and um, 
during our fourth our third year uh we also participate in those but we have um some relaxed um oversight from our attendings we definitely are giving given a long a larger a longer leash to to manage those cases um but i think that what really sets the, our third year apart is the four months we do spend off site um I'm just finishing up two months, the PGY2 two months in Arizona today. Um, and it's been uh, an exceptional learning experience, uh, cut short, unfortunately. Um, but uh, the four months that we do spend in Arizona as PGY3 is really to establish working practices that we will have for our careers. Um, we also, during our third year, spend a month in our MICU, which is the uh, level of, of care that requires all scopes of medical practice and attention. Uh, these patients are very sick and ill and usually end of life. And um, it's an opportunity to see um, the highest level of care uh, coordinated by all the specialties. Uh, we get to participate uh, as much as we, we like um, in, a, in a lot of cases. Um, we don't necessarily take on a patient, but we do participate with those teams and it is an invaluable experience to uh, truly see how uh, complex, truly complex uh, patients uh, are handled. Uh, we also have time to finish our research requirements, which, you know, is a challenge sometimes with as busy as we are in our hospital. And so uh, we are definitely given uh, some time to um, finish some of those capstone projects, particularly, particularly in research. Uh, as well as that dedicated uh, month for studying. We want to make sure that um, all of the principles that we've established in our PGY1 in two years have come full circle and uh, we can solidify them during that month. Um, and usually it's in the second half of the month due to the scheduling of that exam. Um, but yeah, third years, I'm the PGY1s are rising first years. I, I, I told my wife I'm an expanding second year. So uh, I look forward to that in the coming weeks. 